also um, um, a financial um, analyst, a corporate finance specialist at BDO East Africa, based in Uganda. Um, my role here is literally to introduce um, Investia. Um, Investia is uh, um, a corporate finance and advisory uh, firm uh, based in Nairobi. Um, they do, um, um, among the, the services they offer, uh, besides transaction advisory, they do offer financial modeling um, training uh, based on their FAST standard. Um, the FAST standard is um, uh, literally a structure that is followed when you're developing models. So it may be uh, quite useful to those who are also um, uh, corporate finance uh, professionals. So, um, uh, and for the beginners, it's, uh, it's a, a good way to start. So with FAST standard, you're referring to a model being flexible, um, appropriate, um, uh, structured and transparent. So um, the, those are the uh, good standards to, to uh, base your financial model, financial models on, which eventually help you uh, in having uh, discussions with investors um, at a certain point in future or um, carrying out some budget uh, financial planning and analysis within um, various organizations you work in. So um, I'll take this opportunity to hand over to, to Steve to speak more about um, Investia and, and, um, uh, and financial modeling in particular. Thank you very much, uh, George. Uh, uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you and uh, to talk about uh, financial modeling. Uh, I'm just looking at the list of attendees and I'm glad to see that uh, there's a gender, um, uh, how do you call it? You know, nowadays when we speak about gender balance, uh, it's more about uh, accommodating the fairer sex than it is about um, uh, the, the male, side of uh, the 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 gender so I'm, I'm happy to see the quite a lot of ladies who have joined and uh, i'm hoping for a more a, a very uh, engaging productive session and uh, i hope that you'll benefit uh, from this discussion so steve ogada is my name and uh, i i represent uh, investia africa uh, I'll just uh, share my screen so that uh, you can be able to to see the material that I'm about to present. I don't know that my screen is visible. Yes, it is. Oh, great. Great. So uh, uh, let me just start by saying that I'm really excited about uh, this partnership between Investia Africa and uh, CFAC uh, because it gives uh, an opportunity to the membership of CFAC, uh, uh, an opportunity to engage in uh, financial modeling. Now, I remember when I was uh, undertaking my uh, CFA studies, uh, financial modeling, uh, unless today it is part of the uh, part of the curriculum, financial modeling wasn't a focus then. So I gather, uh, uh, rather, I suspect most of uh, the attendees or members who've interacted with financial modeling have either uh, built experience uh, through on job uh, by doing it on the job or uh, have attended courses uh, offered by other parties with respect to financial modeling. So the beauty about then this partnership is that uh, what then you've drawn, whatever experience you've drawn uh, either through working on transactions or working on uh, or analyzing financial 
statements, uh, that, that same experience, then you can be able to apply with just a little bit more structure in terms of uh, 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 forecasting, uh, in terms of uh, analysis, valuation, and so on and so forth. So for the purposes of uh, today's session, so it's mainly an information session. And uh, the idea is uh, that we'd like you to know what the offering is about, um, how you can be able to benefit, uh, and how then you can be able to apply in uh, within your respective careers. So in terms of uh, the contents, uh, I'll speak briefly about uh, Investia and the FAST standard. I'll talk about uh, the training, uh, our course offering, and uh, then uh, you'd also get an opportunity to see uh, the uh, people or entities that we've we've been uh, have, we've been uh, uh, lucky to work with. Great. So about Investia, uh, uh, George had uh, spoken about it. I'll just give it a bit more context. Uh, so we're essentially an advisory firm, and uh, so what we do is uh, we like to say we help our clients uh, with respect to quantifying their decision making. So uh, matters, uh, financial modeling and analysis, uh, business valuation, uh, capital raising, uh, financial due diligence, uh, uh, financial appraisal, uh, and in different sectors, we've built experience in different sectors from uh, FMCG, financial services, uh, real estate, uh, uh, power infrastructure, transport infrastructure, amongst uh, others. And uh, we are passionate about financial modeling because one, we uh, follow a standard, uh, which is the first standard. And the idea about uh, the first standard is that we'd like to standardize how modeling is done. Uh, I'm sure uh, most of you, if not all of you, have interacted with models. And you realize that the models are built in different ways. Uh, they, 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 there's no standardization. Uh, so you find that say you're auditing a model or you're reviewing a model or you're, you're basically uh, going through a model and you make, you make one adjustment and uh, the model collapses or, or you get hash refs and that sends you into panic mode. But uh, the, the, the idea around FAST is, uh, and we'd like to say that uh, First, what, what IFRS is to accounting is what FAST is to modeling uh, because uh, FAST is a standard and the, 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 the basis is that you, we are standardizing how models uh, are built. And uh, so we, we, our vision is to have uh, uh, a group or a crusade of fast modelers uh, within uh, within East Africa and by extension Africa, and uh, again, why for us as investor we are passionate about it is that then we've we've built various models uh, based on uh, the fast standard. We've enjoyed the benefits of using the fast standard, and we'd then like to spread the gospel, spread the word, uh, so that it makes it easier uh, for uh, the people uh, reviewing models or looking at models. It makes for an easier, um, an easier session. So FAST uh, focuses more on the user of the model than the builder of the model. Uh, I'm sure within your respective organizations, uh, you've uh, interacted with the, these scenarios where uh, a model, say, has collapsed or there's some adjustments that need to be made to a model, and there's only one specific person, one specific resource 
who's then uh, knowledgeable on that particular model or uh, who then can be able to make changes. Now, the beauty about FAST is that uh, since it's standardized, the model bill is standardized, then when we exchange, it, 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 it uh, pushes for collaboration amongst modelers. So when we exchange mod models and uh, there are some changes that need to be made to a model, then easily you'll know where to uh, go to make uh, those changes and you know where to go to see the output and so on and so forth. So um, FAST, as uh, George mentioned, uh, is an acronym for flexible, appropriate, structured, and transparent. And uh, the, the, I'll just go through each uh, of those. So flex, flexibility in the sense that, remember model is built on assumptions. Now, you need to have a model for which you can easily change assumptions without necessarily having to change the whole structure of the model. So just for to bring it into context, say today you built um, um, a model and you've applied, uh, say, say it's a, a USD-based model. And uh, of course, you've made certain assumptions about the KES US, USD pair. And um, perhaps you're projecting that uh, there's, uh, there'll be a five, six percent depreciation in the uh, in KES over, say, the next 10 years. Uh, in the event, say, that changes to zero, five, six, uh, and uh, it goes to, say, seven, eight, uh, considering uh, the current uh, global macro environment, then what you should be able to do is just go to the, the assumptions, uh, make the change just on the, 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 the FX uh, conversion without necessarily having to get into the calculation blocks. Those should remain intact. Yeah, so um, there's uh, that, and our example will be maybe inflation rates, maybe you made some assumptions on how inflation will change or price or uh, volume. Again, about uh, something about fast is, is that if say you're projecting revenues, yeah, as opposed to taking then one block figure and applying say a 10% or 15% escalation. So what uh, fast advocates for is then just being as granular as possible. So at the very basic level, revenue is volume times price. So then in your projections, you'll have your vo volume line, you'll have your price line. And so if there's an increase in revenue, then you should be able to uh, establish whether the increase is because of growth in price, I mean, growth in volume or a price, uh, a price increase. Again, when, when it is that granular and properly structured, so if say there's a, a, a decline in say number of customers or a decline in uh, the number of products, then you should be able to quickly uh, uh, change your growth numbers without necessarily having to change the structure of the model. Um, again, on uh, appropriateness uh, is then you're just applying, uh, you're being concise in terms of the model build process where just the, the right amount of detail, not too much uh, unnecessary uh, detail where then, which then would uh, lead to a heavy model, I'm sure, uh, you guys have interacted with the models where if you open uh, the model, then your Excel either uh, the Excel either collapses, so you, you have to shut down everything else, your machine gets slow. So again, just the right amount of, um, of uh, detail into the model. Structured, I talked about being structured, where you will then have a, a model based on FAST, where you have your assumptions on one side, you have your calculations on uh, on another on other sheets, and then you have your output. Okay, so the the the, the model is uh, is is uh, you can say it say that it's big laterally or it's wide, uh, looks heavy. But the beauty uh, about it uh, is 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 that you can then be able to um, make changes. 
uh, to the appropriate sheets, which are the input sheets, and you leave the calculation sheets intact. So there's that element of structure. So, so it is not, um, uh, it doesn't flow vertically where um, uh, you've seen models that have everything on the same page. The assumptions, the calculations, the financial statements, uh, ratio analysis, and so on. In this one, you uh, in the under the first standard, you'll have uh, your constant inputs, your series inputs, then your calculations, revenues, cost, capex, and so on. And then your, your output sheets, financial statements, the dashboard, and so on and so forth. Uh, transparent. Transparency is key in, uh, uh, in a financial model build. And that is something that uh, FAST uh, pushes uh, or advocates for. Where, for example, you have one formula from the beginning, uh, the first column of the model to the last column of the model. So you don't have formulas changing uh, in between no it's one formula across yeah that helps with uh, transparency There's, there are no hard codes um, in the in the formulas uh, going across think about i mean from on the very uh, short end you could be having a model that is maybe uh, three years a three year forecast or at the very at the common level five year forecast but Think about, say, a model where maybe a power model uh, uh, where you're forecasting, say, a 20-year period uh, based on a 20-year PPA. And uh, uh, as, as, as uh, we know that, uh, uh, that projects start from the development phase, construction phase, then the operational phase. So think about the amount of detail that will need to be uh, in that model. So transparency will help uh, in terms of then ensuring that you're very consistent in your application of formulas, of inputs, of calculation blocks. So in summary, that's uh, what uh, FAST is about and what it ad, uh, advocates for. And uh, uh, I'll, I'll move on to the next slide. I, I, I want to, in terms of time allocation, I'd like to uh, um, be a bit more time, I mean, to restrict my time on the presentation so that then uh, we have a bit more time on, uh, on the Q&A or the interaction. So uh, this slide just talks about what uh, we've been able to achieve um, at Investia in terms of uh, uh, valuation assignments, uh, uh, commercial and financial due diligence, uh, capital raising, uh, financial modeling, uh, training. Uh, so as again, I'll just repeat the point that having experienced the benefits of using FAST, then that also informed uh, our uh, need to uh, do training so that then, as I said, we can be able to spread uh, the gospel. Uh, so Again, this just talks about uh, what we do, uh, project and corporate finance advisory, capital raising, uh, financial modeling uh, and training, and uh, public uh, sector modeling. And uh, we've wa done work in East Africa, West Africa, Southern Africa. Um, so uh, I'll talk about the training. So again, uh, I don't think I'll need to define what financial modeling is. Uh, uh, maybe I'll just talk about its significance. Uh, uh, so, so a financial model is a tool, basically. Uh, it's a tool that helps uh, in decision making. And so uh, modeling is basically putting together assumptions, uh, 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 putting together some uh, calculations on a spreadsheet uh, to see what um, uh, your performance could be in the next one, two, three, five years uh, down the line. Uh, it, the tool will help you, one, in terms of valuation. It will help you when you're fundraising. It will help you establish uh, the funding need of a business. Um, it will help you also with risk management because think about 
model stress testing or doing uh, or doing different uh, uh, scenarios, uh, extreme uh, extreme uh, scenarios, extreme cases, uh, doing some sensitivity analysis, and uh, in summary, that is uh, the significance of of um, of a model. Um, we've uh, the uh, the other day uh, we'd, we'd gone to visit uh, a client in uh, Rwanda, and they had uh, done uh, and we had helped them in terms of uh, quantifying their strategic plan. So we we built for them a model that. Uh, was to guide uh, their strategic plan, and we it, we we were glad to know that the the model helped uh, to keep their their teams honest in terms of KPIs, in terms of uh, revenue targets, operational targets. Helped also the treasury team in terms of uh, then. Um, uh, efficient efficiency in terms of utilization of resources, uh, ensuring that there, there are no idle uh, funds, uh, uh, ensuring that uh, uh, excess liquidity is uh, placed, uh, ensuring that uh, they've priced uh, their it's a financial services uh, business, uh, ensuring that they are they've priced their products well, uh, and. So they were very happy uh, to, to have uh, gained uh, benefits from the model. And uh, we are in discussions to help them in the next, uh, in their next uh, strategic plan, which uh, commences in, uh, uh, in by Q2 of, of this year. So why fast? So, sorry. Uh, so we have, uh, I mean, sorry, why invest here? Uh, we have experienced uh, trainers. We have um, team members who have, uh, have hands-on um, application uh, of uh, the business case, uh, the different sectors. Uh, and so we can relate, it's not theoretical, uh, only, but uh, there's a practical experience. Um, then our trainers are also fast uh, certified. Uh, uh, the, there's a fast certification that uh, is issued for uh, modelers who have undergone uh, uh, fast um, uh, modeling training and can be able to build fast uh, models. Uh, there's value for money. Mm, one uh, investor is um, uh, locally based and uh, unlike the euro monies of this world and uh, uh, the, the other uh, London, New York based entities, uh, you'd be able to uh, get benefits uh, from uh, a locally based entity that uh, ensures that pricing uh, ref is reflective of uh, the local context uh, and proximity uh, to clans. Uh, then um, there's additional uh, ad 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 additional value adds in terms of improving Excel productivity. Uh, in fact, I, I always like to say that uh, if Microsoft had known uh, the, the, how robust Excel is, uh, they, they will have sold it as a separate uh, uh, package. Uh, I say that because to date, uh, we've not fully utilized uh, all the Excel functions and every day is a learning day, but uh, you, you interact with people, they think you're, you're an Excel guru, yet uh, there's still so much uh, in Excel uh, and what Excel can be able to do. So during our trainings then, in addition to learning the technique and skills of uh, financial modeling, there's also um, the added benefits of improving Excel productivity. Um, so uh, the other value add is uh, the training is based on the FAST standard, uh, which is an internationally recognized standard. Uh, I've spent uh, quite a bit of time talking about FAST, so I won't belabor the point. Uh, 
there's certification, uh, which then helps in terms of just uh, recognizing that uh, you followed, uh, uh, you've undertaken the first training. Then there's also lifetime access to online financial modeling uh, resources. Um, I've spoken about FAST, uh, no need to talk about that again. In terms of our approach, um, how we like to undertake our training is that we must undertake a needs assessment uh, just to get to see what the issues are, what the concerns are, uh, what the, the participants would like to, learn, uh, to know about, to learn then uh, we would prepare our content or training uh, material uh, based on uh, what uh, the needs assessment re results uh, provide. Then uh, we, we deliver uh, through either online or through or physically, but uh, with the, in the advent of uh, COVID, uh, most of our trainings have been online. And uh, there's, there's been um, some efficiency achieved uh, with that. Then uh, so, uh, lastly, we'll do, after training, we'll then do a survey just to get feedback from the participants in terms of what their experience was, what they've been able to, to learn and so on and so forth. Uh, our course offering, uh, there's, um, the online self-study option where we have some uh, material online, both the uh, corporate and project finance, uh, uh, financial modeling uh, training. And this then uh, participants would undertake at, at their leisure or at their speed. Mm -hmm. So it's basically self-paced. Um, and again, it is, um, you have lifetime access uh, to that. Then uh, there's the cohort option, which then we've uh, shrinked to a period of uh, six weeks, where there's, um, you get uh, access to the online material, uh, in addition to live online sessions uh, every week, uh, about 30 minutes uh, for Q&A, then you get some facilitator sessions, um, you also get some sessions with industry experts just to be able to give uh, an opportunity for them to give their view in terms of uh, what the, their experience has been. Uh, then uh, <clears throat> there's the model build uh, based on uh, four pre-selected case studies. Uh, I think one is in healthcare, one is in education, one is in uh, ICT, uh, I can't recall what the other one is on, but uh, there's some case studies to apply. Then there's uh, in-class training, which I mentioned that um, uh, uh, since uh, the advent of COVID has not been very, uh, very common, uh, but then uh, sometimes we still have, we still have those uh, uh, sessions. Uh, yeah, so that's in class. Then, um, yeah, that uh, brings us to just showing you what then the work that we've been able to do with uh, the various entities from uh, public sector, financial services, uh, manufacturing, uh, the uh, different entities that we've been able to to work with uh, in terms of uh, financial build, uh, uh, financial modeling training under the first standard, uh, which uh, largely has been on uh, corporate finance, financial modeling and valuation. Uh, um, but the, we've also had some project finance uh, uh, training. Uh, and as you can see, we've had, uh, interactions with the uh, entities from different uh, uh, jurisdictions. Um, and we've been able to continue to spread the word on uh, financial modeling uh, training. 
uh, from DFIs reg to regulators to uh, uh, to to the big four uh, and um, amongst others. Yep, and uh, that brings me to the end of my monologue. So uh, I'll uh, throw it back to you, George. Uh, maybe we can then get into some Q and A. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you, Steve, for that uh, succinct um, presentation. Um, at this point in time, I see we still have a uh, couple of minutes. We'll be able to check some questions. And um, I would advise that um, those who have questions, probably leave them in the chat, or um, we'll be able to unmute you to, to ask and, and have uh, Steve address your questions. Um, you can raise your hand um, in case you have any question. Um, uh, okay, I'll go first. Uh, Steve, my, my question is, um, in the event, um, um, uh, let's say you, you've gone through um, the Investia course outline, um, you know, um, uh, financial modeling is all about practice and, um, and, and, you know, building the skills. It's not that within that period of six weeks that um, someone will be able to be uh, exceptionally good at the skill. So what sort of advice would you give to um, some of the attendees who are probably not uh, employed um, in sectors where the skill is required to, you know, um, keep on improving? Great, uh, and uh, that's uh, a very important question. So uh, something that I've always uh, told uh, uh, participants in uh, uh, who then undertake financial modeling training is that uh, I've always told them to uh, practice, practice, practice. And uh, I've always told them that uh, uh, think about life after your current employer and what you'd be able to, uh, what your value proposition would be to your next employer or even to yourself, say, if you are to go solo. So my, my experience uh, in uh, financial modeling training is that you'd find that uh, self-sponsored uh, participants are more keen on the on the course uh, on the on, in undertaking the course and uh, applying it more than employer sponsored uh, students and uh, or participants and <clears throat> you, you you I always tell them that you see with financial modeling, if you don't practice, then it's it's just a waste of time because uh, then you forget the concepts, you 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 lose on efficiency. You're not um, um, as agile as you would want to be. You will forget uh, some uh, concepts. So, uh, as you rightly say, George, that. It's it's all about practice, and you don't have to wait for to be given a, a work assignment, or uh, 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 you don't have to wait for your employer to 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 give you work to do. It's something that you can be able to do on your own, uh, so as to ensure that you always you always have the skill sets on your fingertips and uh, your. You, you, you're applying uh, as much as possible. So even for the guys who are not uh, currently employed or uh, those who are still maybe the, the, are students, you can be able to get material to keep practicing as uh, much as possible. George, I hope I've answered your question. Yes, you have. Um, and also a way that... Um... I, you know, one of the means I used when I was also learning uh, financial modeling was 
um, to, to start off with the uh, information that's readily available. So you have quite a number of companies that are listed on, um, on the various stock exchanges uh, across the East African region. So you can start by picking interest in a particular sector, um, you know, um, um, reading their reading a lot from their financial um, audit reports, uh, management presentations, uh, gives you a sense of, um, of um, you know, what are the main drivers of that business. Then you keep on uh, practicing and building financial models. Perhaps you'll notice that maybe um, one of the, the companies you've considered is actually undervalued and gives you the chance to also, uh, you know, partake in, in, um, in, uh, in, in investing in itself. Um, so thank you, thank you, Steve, you've addressed my question. I see um, uh, John Okumu, um, you have your hand uh, raised, you can go ahead and ask. You can actually unmute yourself. Yes, thanks, uh, thanks George, and good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks, Steve, as well, for that um, in insightful brief. Um, so I'm, I'm a financial modeling and valuation um, practitioner as well. And I wanted to get your opinion on whether you believe um, knowledge of, of or, or a bit of experience with coding and programs such as, um, you know, VBA, et cetera, um, is necessary for one to become a good uh, modeler. Um, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, George. So, um, uh, <laughs> okay, it helps, but uh, I, I wouldn't say it's a, it's a, uh, a prerequisite because uh, that one will just be scaring away uh, potential uh, uh, modelers. So it helps to, it will help, it will, it will, let me say, it will be an added advantage uh, uh, if you know uh, coding, it will be an added advantage, but not knowing coding and uh, VBA doesn't uh, keep you from being a good financial modeler. You see, uh, the, the thing, and as I'm sure you know, that uh, the thing about uh, uh, modeling is, and modeling efficiently, is that it requires you to know uh, or build your experience in uh, use of spreadsheets and functions and formulas and so on. But over time, as, uh, uh, as uh, modeling has uh, evolved, there are also um, other, I mean, there, there are, uh, there have been uh, development of macros, for example. So fast also comes with uh, certain macros that can that that aids in terms of helping you. That aids in um, uh, being quicker or efficient uh, in terms of Excel productivity. So with those kind of macros, so there are fast macros. Uh, I'm sure you've interacted with the Wall Street macros. There are um, uh, um, can't remember uh, uh, the others, but over time there are macros that make work easier uh, 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 with respect to modeling. So oh, yes, coding can be. Uh, I mean, is an added advantage, but doesn't prevent anyone from being a, a good modeler. Uh, I hope that answers the question. Yes, it does. Thanks. Thanks. George, you on mute. So uh, there's someone was asked, um, how much is the training, Steve? uh in the chat oh <laughs> great so um i think uh, we so so that we're still working on with the uh, uh, cfac and uh, i'm sure there'll be uh, some communication out uh soon once uh, 
we uh, scheduled some training and uh, uh, um, Leanne, I hope I've uh, answered that correctly. Okay. Um, uh -huh. Sorry, yes, you have. Um, good morning, everybody. I'm Leanne, uh, Marketing Manager for Investor Africa, and um, I'll bring your attention to a chat that I've just shared. Uh, please, please fill in the form so that we can contact you once um, we have the training dates announced. Uh, just to reiterate what um, Leanne has said is that. Um, um, uh, we're still, um, given that this is a collaboration between Investia and uh, and and um, and CFA Society East Africa, so we'll be able to um, inform everyone on the pricing once uh, once that's uh, finalized. So um, there is a form uh, in the chat that you can use to leave your details. So once uh, we are done with the, um, this internal process, we'll definitely be able to reach out to you. And, and and let you know um, uh, what packages are available. Okay, uh, Hilda, Hilda had her hand raised. Yes, I had my hand raised. I, uh, just in case anyone may not be able to hear me, please do tell me. So my question is uh, previously, I had begun financial modeling, but it's only recently that have been introduced to the FAST standard. And my question is, I've noticed that in the FAST standard, there seems to be a specific um, order on how a calculation block should look. So I don't know if there's actually a specific order because um, I think I've done some practice uh, models from the, I think the FAST website. And I noticed as if there's a specific order in which calculation blocks are, are arranged. And I don't know if, you know, Steve can confirm if it is so. And also, um, I have a question also about the flags. And, um, and um, I keep on uh, getting confused on whether if you put a flag in a calculation block, is it a must that a subsequent calculation line has to be linked to it, or can a flag just be a, a, a line item on its own without it having any dependence? That's my question. Thank you, Hilda. Mm, so uh, I'll start uh, by talking about the, the order uh, that you speak about and, uh, and calculation block arrangement. So let me create some context to give some background. We all know that uh, modeling is a lot of work. I mean, modeling is not uh, some is not a walk in the park. That's number one. Number two is since we know that modeling is a lot of work, um, then again, based on your experience with the uh, reviewing models or looking at models, uh, you don't want to get lost in the numbers. Uh, you don't want to get lost in the disorganization of a model builder. And that's why, uh, again, uh, as I mentioned, that FAST then uh, advocates for order in modeling. And uh, so part of that order and part of the structure that I spoke about is the calculation block arrangement. So the idea is to ensure that the calculation blocks are property, sorry, properly arranged uh, and are, are in order so that if you need to query a calculation, then uh, you're not all over the place. You get to that calculation block. And as I mentioned that the calculate that a formula uh, should be the same from the first column to the end, whether the end is, uh, 10 months or 240 months away, it should be the same. So uh, hence the reason why FAST um, pushes for, for uh, some order in terms of uh, the arrangements and the calculation block, because the basis of um, FAST is that models are built for users, not for the model builder. They are built for 
uh, analysts, they are built for investment committees, they are built for decision making. The idea is if say today uh, you're told that um, you're, 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 you're making a presentation to the board in an hour and uh, you've been given some changes to make on, on the model, then you don't you, you don't start sweating. You know, if say I'm to change say remuneration rates for the GM, or if I'm to change inflation, or if I'm to change um, uh, the capex amounts, for example, then first uh, will ensure that you can be able to turn around that uh, within a few minutes or in under an hour. So uh, that is uh, uh, the the. The, my, my response on the issue of order about flags and uh, so for the purposes of everyone so flags are used are used in the financial model uh, because they help in terms of uh, telling you uh, say um, to, to signify that there's there'll be an activity happening so which activities is it and when is it happening say for example your modeling uh, funding, uh, and uh, your th there's um, there's debt uh, as part of the funding, and you're told that this debt it has maybe an availability period of uh, say three years. Then you can build a flag for uh, the availability period of three years, or uh, you're told that uh, you can be able to draw down on this debt uh, by the end of Q2. So then you'd use a flag to note that by 30th June, the, uh, the debt amount is available for drawdown. Yeah? You can also then use a flag to, to represent the debt tenor, for example. Say, say it's a, it's a five-year uh, term loan. Uh, you can use a flag to say that this term loan then uh, um, runs, runs for a period of uh, five years. So Hilda, in terms of uh, the use of flags, no, they don't have to be linked to a previous calculation or to a subsequent calculation. What matters is knowing what the flag is to be used for. If it is a forecast period flag, for example, which then basically says that these calculations want them to apply only in the forecast period, then that will be applied to almost all calculations, all calculation blocks. Yeah, but if it is just for specific purpose, like for the one I mentioned about a debt turn or a debt drawdown date, then it will only be for that particular calculation block. Uh, Hilda, I hope that is uh, uh, sufficient. Yes, you have answered it very sufficiently. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, thank, thank you, Steve. There is also a question in relation to um, in the event someone signs up for the online uh, self-study, for how long will they have access to uh, the material? Is it a lifetime uh, access? Then the second question is, uh, once they sign up, um, will they be able to consult or uh, interact with the investor team uh, in relation to the, the course material? Yeah, so the answer to the first question is in the affirmative uh, that uh, it's a lifetime uh, access. And then uh, on the second one is that, yes, um, uh, we normally allocate some time for uh, interaction with our team members uh, just to ensure that uh, you're comfortable in the use of uh, that uh, license if there are any questions uh, uh, our team members can be able to answer thank you okay yeah. um then the other is uh there's someone um who is an accountant and they would like advice on how they could um uh, you know make use of financial modeling skills uh um in order to avoid uh, avoid it being a misaligned uh, interest so how can they, uh, despite, let's say, being an accountant, how can they uh, use such skills in, in, in their course of work? Yeah, so modeling is right down the alley of an accountant, uh, of an accountant's day-to-day -day work. Because, I mean, think about it. Uh, a, a model would help you uh, in terms of, say, budgeting and forecasting. 
uh, it would help you in terms of, uh, like I mentioned, the, the case uh, with a client of ours, quantifying uh, a strategic plan. So that if, say, for example, your, your, uh, the business, maybe it's an FMCG uh, doing, uh, say, uh, um, uh, foods, for example, and they are saying that uh, in the next five years, we'd like to expand uh, yeah, within the East Africa region. Uh, and we, we'd like to our market share to grow to say maybe 20%. Uh, that would mean that our revenues maybe uh, grow, uh, say 30%. Then as the accountant, you, you, you'd then through financial modeling, you'd be able to add value to um, your your business uh, to the business uh, by qu asking questions around. Okay, what does a thirty percent growth in revenue mean in terms of resources? For example, do we have the right number of personnel? Does it mean then our team complements grow? Does it also come with the capex uh, that? <coughs> Maybe on the top line, yes, we are saying our revenue is growing at 30%, but we are not looking at our capacity. Uh, do, our production do our production facilities as they are today support that kind of growth? Or do we need additional equipment? Now, once you've established that uh, you need additional uh, capex, then resources, resources in terms of funding, do we have sufficient funding for that? or Will you then require to uh, will you be required to uh, get some debt or some facility from the bank or for or ask the investors to the, the shareholders to inject some capital? So as an accountant, modeling revolves revolves around uh, an accountant's day to day because I mean think about it, one of the outputs or the key output of, of uh, financial modeling is uh, financial statements. And I mean, who, who prepares financial statements better than accountants? Thank you. Okay. Um, then there, there is also another question. Um, um, Moses says his interest is in project finance. Um, do you focus the training for the different specialities? Yes, uh, Moses. So as I mentioned, that um, we have training in both uh, corporate and project finance, and uh, so uh, one of uh, uh, the things that we can be able to do in our partnership with the CFAC is uh, 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 maybe do a, a poll of some sort in terms of uh, establishing the numbers for project finance or the number amount of interest in project finance training, schedule that uh, uh, sometime uh, in the course of this half of the year, and then uh, uh, look at subsequently what uh, the demand is for corporate finance uh, training. But uh, as I mentioned, yes, we do offer we do offer both, and we also have online uh, 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 classes for both. Thank you. George? George? Uh, uh, Lian? Um, we seem to have lost George. Um, just I was, fact, I was calling your name just to check. Maybe I'm done. Oh. I'd, just, I'd lost myself. Okay. I'm just emphasizing for uh, people to fill in the, uh, the registration form so that we know, um, so that we can call you or just give you information in regards to the different cohorts um, that we have throughout this year. Um, someone has asked what about training for financial modeling for financial services and insurance, whether we do that. Yes, so uh, one of uh, the 
courses we have uh, is uh, for uh, uh, financial modeling training for financial services. Uh, I think is uh, the case studies for a bank, and uh, uh, then and we've also built uh, insurance models. So again, it's just back to what uh, the training needs are, and uh, then we should be able to put together a solution for it. There's another question of how much will charge uh, project finance. However, we have said that we will communicate this once we finish the internal processes and then uh, we will we'll send out flyers with this information. So just look, be on the lookout for that. All right. Um, I think um, we can close. Um, there being no other questions. Um, Oscar, I am answering your question. Uh, you've asked me a question directly and I'm going to answer that. Um, I think, um, Steve Ogata, thank you so much for this, for the presentation and informing us about financial modeling training and all that just offers. Um, maybe you could share some closing remarks. Sorry, Leanne. I, I asked uh, for closing remarks. Oh, from me? Yes. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you, Lian, um, and uh, thank you all for making time for this. Um, uh, I hope it was an, info an, uh, an informative session and um, that uh, there are some key takeaways uh, from it. Uh, and I think that uh, uh, financial modeling training or practice will go hand in hand with your CFA uh, uh, training and uh, also by extension your your professional experience. So thank you very much and uh, uh, we hope to see you uh, undertaking financial modeling uh, uh, training under FAST. Thank you, Leanne. All right. Um, thank you so much. Ruth, would you like to say something um, on behalf of CFA? All right. Um, also can't find Ruth. So thank you so much, everyone, for taking the time to join and participating um, in the question and answers uh, section. I hope you filled the registration form um, so that we can reach out to you once uh, we have the dates ready and the pricing um, is agreed upon. Uh, we hope that um, this will be a beginning of your or your continuation of your financial modeling um, journey. And thank you so much for, to, for joining us and have a good day. Bye. Thanks. Good day.